first boss, Terra Gru, obviously super easy. Um, big things, Sulfur Comp on Terra Gru. We ran four healers. You can run five healers on this fight if you want to. The only thing that you're going to die to on this fight is people over soaking. So having too many stacks of the fire dot or getting like magic stacks and then getting the big dot. So four healing or five healing is fine on this fight. The two tanks, nothing special. You can run any tanks. We ran the tanks that we knew we were going to use for Sylvanas. So that's why you ran Blood DK and Prop Paladin. DPS, doesn't matter, run whatever. Um, big thing, as far as powers go, you want to have one or two, at least two, I would say, stun immunes, uh, fear and stun immunes um, to deal with the chains. You want at least one or two of the raid movement speed to help you deal with the in intermission. It's like, you know, the, the pools that you have to dodge. Movement speed is super nice. And then besides that, you just go full on blasting damage powers. So for damage powers, always take powers that deal damage to the boss over secondary stats. So, you know, if you're if you have to choose between like 8% crit and potent acid gland, always take the acid gland. Um, they generally do much more damage. And most of them are also hasted. So if your class likes haste you're going to do a ton of damage with them. The only power that we banned is the one that makes you deal 30% increased damage, but you become larger. So this one, Lumbering Form, that one's banned. If anyone takes that in your raid, immediately tell them to reroll or they have to sit and watch from the bench. Um, that is the only power that can troll your raid incredibly by knocking people around in, in the intermission. Um, so that it's a super strong DPS power, but you do not want anyone in your raid to have that because they're, they're going to kill people in the intermission. Your tanks should try to soak the magic debuff, which is the purple circle as often as possible. Your DPS should be soaking the physical debuff, which is like the gray one. Um, and then anyone can soak the fire debuff. It's kind of up to your raid. So for the fears, there's two ways of dealing with them. Um, you either just single dispel everyone, just make sure your melee are spread, or you mass dispel. As soon as the fears come out, you can have a mass dispel thrown out on the melee as long as they're fairly stacked. And if you have a tremor totem, totem down, you can get most of them. And then anyone who didn't get dispelled can get single dispelled. Um, you can deal either do either one and it's not going to matter too much. Other than that, it's literally just soaking, 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 and you'll kill this boss. For soaking, you should not go above like three stacks-ish. Um, the physical dot, as a DPS player, you can soak as many as you want, which is the one that I'm soaking right now in this clip. The fire dot, only soak about two stacks. Um, the magic dot, you never want to soak unless you're in an immune class or a hunter. Because if you get the magic dot, then or the magic amp debuff, then they put the magic dot on you, the one that lasts like 20 seconds or something, you're just instantly going to die. Um, so you can see that I have the dot right now. Like, this is the fear dot. Anyone in the raid have it? Um, not exactly sure when they come out, but essentially, like, hunters are able to feign death. Um, you know, Paladins can bubble, Mages can Ice Block. So those classes can soak the Magic Amp Dot, which is the purple circle, but everyone else should stay away from it. Um, yeah, there's nothing much else to this fight. You just intercept. You can deal with the chain one of two ways. You can either drop a marker the way we did behind the tanks, because we always have our stun immune on the tanks. Um, so the person marked with the chain runs to the marker, so they're behind the tanks. Or you can have the person with the chain stand still, everyone else move out of their way, and the person with the stun immune run to intercept. Um, either one's fine, honestly. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much this fight. There's honestly not much to it. Um, soak orbs, don't die to the big dot. 
make your tank soak the magic orb if you can dps soak physical orb and fire orb that's pretty much it once you get to 10 percent um taunt around ideally you want to taunt from one side of the room to the other druids are able to kite forever um if a necrolord taunts don't taunt off of them because they'll be able to live for a very long time if they're running high mirror but yeah that's terry grew Nothing really special happens this first boss.